Welcome to this time of prayer and praise and pulling up a chair to be at table with God and with one another. I hope you have with you some bread and some fruit of the vine, generously interpreted. What you have on hand is just fine, especially if it's something that gives you comfort through this meal. We begin in the name of God, the founder of this feast. We begin in the name of Jesus, the host at each table. We begin in the name of the Spirit who binds us together as one. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash his disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his friends, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. Writing to the church in Corinth, a community he loved and struggled with, the Apostle Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We enter together into this time of remembrance and breaking bread and partaking of the cup and being nourished by the love of God. reading from the Gospel according to John. Selected verses from John chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not now know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the religious leaders, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We live not by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. Jesus was always gathering around a table with friends. He enjoyed a wedding feast as much as the next disciple, and he didn't hesitate to make sure everybody had the best wine to drink. He hurried to the home of Martha and Mary and Lazarus whenever he was in town, and he enjoyed not only their friendship, but their hospitality at table. He gathered on the gently rolling hillsides which large groups of newly made friends, people he'd been teaching or healing, and he managed with very few resources, sometimes a few loaves and fish that a nearby child offered. And he fed up to 10,000 at a time because, yes, we do count the women and children. Thank you, Miller. Jesus even gathered at table with people who weren't such close friends, people who had questions about him, people who challenged him and chided him. Jesus loved a good supper. So it's no wonder that on the night before he died, he gathered with his friends once again to share a Passover dinner, not a Seder, as many of us are used to or familiar with, That developed later, but they did share a meal to celebrate what God had done, leading God's people out of slavery, a long journey to a new land, and even in the wilderness, feeding them with bread from heaven and living water. People all around the world are in a wilderness time right now. We are in a wilderness time, what feels like a very long journey with an uncertain path and an even more uncertain ending. In many places, people are doing as we are doing, staying home. And even now, even in the wilderness, we are connected to one another. We're connected as a worshiping community. We're connected as the body of Christ with people all throughout the world. We are connected with every living human being, one with each person on this earth. So tonight we weave our own particular corners of the wilderness together here in this space. 
We join together for something unusual, to be sure. We take communion together. Communion, a word that means come together as one. But since when did coming together mean that we had to be in the same room? We come together when our intentions lead us in the same direction. We come together when our hearts are aligned. We come together when our spirits join as one. So now I invite you to join me in communion as we remember not only that final meal that Jesus shared, but all the meals he shared with all kinds of people. I invite you to remember not only the meals we find in scripture, but also the meals you have known in your own life. Meals taken on the fly, meals planned for weeks, and everything in between. And as we remember, we come together, our hearts and minds joined as one, even through time and distance. We come together to partake from a table that has been set for us by one who loved to be at table with those he loved. We come together knowing that we are among those beloved followers, the ones he loved to the end. May our God be with us all. May we all lift our hearts into God's embrace. May we all join our hearts together in thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you watered the earth that man and woman 
your newborn children might have food and drink. You gave to your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey and wine to make them glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food and living water in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share. And here at your table, you offer us bread and the fruit of the vine for the journey to nourish us as your children. And so with all our siblings before us and beside us, we praise you from our hearts for your unending greatness. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to use the words of your heart. So debtors and trespassers and sinners together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to join me in a prayer, much as the prayers we pray when we are together at the time of the children's message. I'll say a phrase and invite you to repeat it after me. Holy Comforter, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. Look, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation, broken for us, poured out for us, the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you now to take communion. Please join me in our prayer following communion. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of love we have shared. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your love for the world. Through Jesus, our host at this table. Amen.
And now may you shelter not only in place, but also in peace. May the peace and comfort of Christ be with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.